Good morning. Good morning, Lighthouse Church. Man, it's well done for being here this morning. I think uh, whatever I'm about to share with you guys, I think it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Pastor Derek sends his love. He's on a, on a well-deserved break. Uh, for some of you that maybe don't know me, my name is Philip. I'm also one of the pastors here. And today I have the privilege of sharing the word with you, something that is actually extremely close to our hearts, me, myself, and Letty. So just to give you a bit of background, uh, I'm married to a, a lady, obviously, and uh, a lovely lady. Her name is Letty. We have three wonderful children. The Lord has blessed us with, uh, with twins, uh, Joshua and Tobias, uh, and they are busy, man. They are nearly four years old, and we, man, we are enjoying them so much. And then we have Jono. Jono is uh, he's nearly two years old. And then in March, we are expecting number four. You guys cheer. I can see you guys cheer. I'm like, woo, four boys. But man, we are so blessed because it's the, it's the tenth uh, grandchild and all of them are boys. All of them are boys. Hey, is that a blessing or what? So, and, and, and like, like many of you guys know, man, I, I love talking about, I love talking about my boys. You know, it's a, we, we, our house is about growth and it's a great passion for me and Letty to see people grow grow in the Lord. And, and as I'm talking about growth, you can obviously hear what I'm talking about this morning is, is growth. It's one of our key f- top five values that we have. But like I say, I, I like boasting about my boys because, man, they get, they get up to stuff there. Eh? Uh, you, you as a parent just shake your head. That we, one of the most f- scariest things I've ever heard, with my, the one twin say to the other was, hey, I have a plan. And then the other one said, hey, I have a better plan. And right there you get up and go, look, what are these boys up to? What are they doing? So uh, something, something that stood really out for me was when they were three years old, I was so excited, man. We, we bought them bicycles. And uh, these, these bicycles we put there for them with balloons and made it all nice. And I'm so excited because I know that this skill that we are going to teach them is going to open up a whole new world for them. Hey, whole new world. We, they woke up in the morning, we showed it to them, and then the, the moment came. We took them out on their bikes. They put on these helmets. Man, it looks so cute. One red, one blue. Man, it's an ambulance coming down the, down the road. But eventually, when we put them on the bikes, distractions galore. It was as if they've never even left the house. They would come out and say, oh, a dog. Yes, there's a dog. Cycle. Cycle. No, no. Oh, Cat. There's a cat. Yeah, I know there's a cat. Cycle. Trappy feet. And oh, a dove. Dead dove. Papa, what is it So uh, there was all these distractions. And, and my goodness, I, I just wanted to ride the bike. So eventually, the, the first time that we took them out, we had to push, the, push them the whole way. And one of the things they also did, they cycled, but backwards. I don't know. It's, has any one of you trained a child seen that they cycle backwards? At the incredible speed. I actually stood there thinking, how am I going to write rally a letter saying um, that the sprockets have been worn out the other way around? So it's, it's, it's distractions. But after some time, after more practice, after more exercising, they actually got it. Because they have these, you know, these three wheels at the back. Man, they are doing moves now that make me go, whoa, whoa, starach, starach. But they are enjoying it. And the, the main thing is they, they grew into it. They grew into riding a bicycle. So now we can go much further. Now we can explore much more. But what they don't know is there's going to be a day that I will remove those extra wheels. And then they will fall again and I'll pick them up again. I will say it is okay. Yes, I feel sometimes so bad. One night I washed my, I was washing my boy in the in the bath, and I noticed yes, his legs are extremely dirty. And I keep on washing it. Did it come out? Then I realized that it's blue. He was falling. Guys, please, please, don't go tell the child protection services, okay? Because they're gonna come to my house and they're gonna give me more kids. Okay, so I've I've got four on the way. I've got I've got enough. But, but isn't it also the same with God? Hey? He wants us to grow. When you get saved, you cannot be the same person that you were yesterday. It is, it, is such a, it is such excitement that God has for you to grow because there is so much more. It is such an adventure 
to, to grow and learn more of who he is and what he's got for you. But, man, before I get too much curious, let's open up in prayer. I think we're going to have a smashing of a time. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this wonderful morning. I pray, Lord, that whatever is for me, our Lord, may it fall on deaf ears. Father, whatever is from your throne room, may it equip people here this morning. Lord, may they take whatever they learn and actually apply it to their lives and see the change as they see the growth, as they, as they how can I say, enjoy the adventure with you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now picture this quickly. Imagine on a Sunday morning, we all sit here. Some of you guys are having a lacquer cup of coffee. Some of you guys are booking your, um, your kids in there in that huge hot engine there at the back. And, and all of a sudden, someone walks in. It's about 16, 17 years old, looks normal. And then all of a sudden, this boy, let's, let's say it's a boy, falls down and hoys a tantrum. Now, I must say, Apparently some 17-year-olds still do that, okay? But this one throws a tantrum. And then all of a sudden, the mummy comes and says, Oh, don't worry, my little baby. Here's some milk. Do 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 Drinks a bit. Uh, there we go. <laughs> it, it's unheard of. It, it doesn't make sense. You, you look at it, it's like, yeah, something, something is not right. And, and the same it is, it is for you. You might have heard the saying that goes, God loves you the way you are, but he loves you too much to keep you the way you are. And for me, that, that rings true. In the, in the Bible, uh, growing in the Lord, growing spiritually, it, it has a very, I want to say fancy word, and I want to mention it this morning, because if you bump into it in the book of Romans, Corinthians, Thessalonians, you, you will come across this word, and this word's name is sanctification. And what it literally means it means to be made holy. Not holy, the one in your sock. Holy. Okay? So, what it says, and holiness means you are being separated. So, you were taken from one end to another. You have been separated. And now, because you are on this side of the line, now some new things have to change. Whatever you learned there, you have to unlearn over here. So, I actually want to explain this quickly. And I'm going to apologize because, because I don't have my mic. I'm just going to use my hands. First of all, a basic illustration. So when you guys were on this side of the line, you were in the world. They, you, got, you got pasted with, you were lost. You know, you were tagged and said you were lost. You were tag, tagged with saying you were rejected. No one loves you. Hey? And you were tagged with, you said, listen here, bud, you're broken. You're not going anywhere. But then, oh, you got saved. Hey, how do you like my crown? My wife made it. And the emphasis is on made. Because we didn't have one that fitted. So then you got saved. And then the Lord comes and he says, hang on. Let me tell you this. I tell you, you have purpose. I tell you. My apologies, you are accepted. I tell you that you are made whole. And now you're standing here and you're like, you look at the two, the one is the truth, the other one is a lie. And then what sanctification is, is this. You do this. You don't believe this anymore. That's called repentance. You see, the thing is, many people will say, but why repent? Well, you placed value in that. What you place value, you start living out. And what you start living out, you actually have an effect on your life. That is why you need to repent of it. So repent of believing the lies, but you uh, adopt and you take up the new identity that God has for you. So that, in a nutshell, is uh, what sanctification is. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 it says, now may God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Two quick things. There's a lot you can take out of that scripture, but two quick things. First of all, God is responsible for your sanctification. Okay? Secondly, you will either do it through participation 
or through obedience or through uh, discipline. Participation, in other words, you guys say, Lord, I'm in, show me where, and I obey what you say. So there's an obedience uh, linked to it. In the Old Testament, God says many times that I, I accept obedience more than sacrifice. So you can't actually get yourself sanctified. It is something that God tells you to do, and you do it through obedience. And then secondly, obviously, is uh, through discipline. But the thing is about discipline is uh, it's only for those naughty guys. And if you, if you struggle with sometimes with things and the Lord is disciplining you a lot, stop. Stop and ask the Lord, where am I going wrong? And then obey whatever he says. In, uh, in Hebrews it says, uh, the Lord loves those whom he disciplines. So take heart in that as well. You're being disciplined because God loves you. Is that good? Okay. Another important thing is sanctification. Hey, growing in the Lord. It's not the same for everyone. It's not the same for everyone. I might be ahead in certain areas of my life where you are not, but in other areas you might be quite far ahead where I am not. So it is, it is all different. But, guys, I want to encourage you. It is an adventure. God wants to take you on an adventure. He wants to teach you new things of who is He wants to use you in areas. But there are certain things that you still need to work out that you got from here that you must throw off and repent of so that you can live in whatever calling God has for you on this side. So in my allotted years of being a Christian, I, I've put together about six points just to, just to share with you that helped me actually also grow spiritually to allow God to sanctify me. First one is, and I want to congratulate all of you, go to church. Hey, well done. You can give yourself a hand for that. It's go to church. I've, I've noticed when, when, when it was the most difficult times at university as well, the one thing I made sure was, was going to church. Hebrews 10, 25 says, Do not neglect the meeting together of the saints, as, as some are in the habits of, but engage one another as you all see the day drawing near. For Lighthouse Church, this is a great value as well. We gather here at church. We care. We, we drink coffee. We, we enjoy coffee. I don't know if you've noticed it. When you walk in here, you smell it. We enjoy, enjoy coffee. And with that, something also happens. You, you, you rub shoulders with people. There's a, there's a proverb that says, uh, to Proverbs 27, 17, it says, Iron sharpens iron, and so one man sharpens another. A lot of people see this in a much negative sense in that, just, you know, you can, get, you can get angry with some people, you know, then you need to learn. But that's not always the case. In many cases, how I learned, when I rubbed shoulders with people, I saw how God was working in their lives. And then I wanted it for myself. So I changed. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. That is why so many people were drawn to him, because everyone wanted to have what he had, and he showed them what it was. So... That is what it also actually means. Uh, a guy called Dan Pina said something very interesting. He said, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. So I want to encourage you guys. Make friends with the people that you meet at church. That's why one of our values is gathering. It is life groups. Get into a life group. It is really your life will change because of that. Our next point that, that is probably the most fundamental fundamental point is reading your Bible and praying every day. Friends, you cannot grow. You cannot grow if you don't read your Bible and pray. But Psalm, Psalm 1 verse 1 and 2 says, Blessed is the man who walks in the council, who does not walk in the counsel of weak, the wicked, nor st stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seats of scoffers, but delights in the law and, uh, and meditates on it day and night. I've noticed a lot of the times the reason why people uh, struggle with spending time with God is actually this. You don't make it a priority. You, you don't see value in it, so you won't make it a priority, so you won't, you won't start doing it. And I, and I want to encourage you guys, make it a priority in your life. Add value to spending time with God. You will be amazed at what the results are. I've also heard a lot of people say to me, yes, Philip, you know what? I, I battle to read. And I circle through it, and yes, I know there's audio books and stuff that you can use, but I want to encourage you, start reading. Reading is a skill. You can improve your skill. You can work on it. You can become better at it. And you, and you need to, to read because that's one of the ways, primary ways God speaks to you. 
a guy who wrote a book. Uh, the book's name is The Seven, Habit, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Some of you have, might have read it yourselves. Uh, Stephen Covey, he, he said something that blew me away. He said, a man who does not read is as good as a man who cannot read. A man who does not read is as good as a man who cannot read. Yo, that's deep. Huh? Like a secunda potto. <laughs> you see the giraffe sticking his head out. So, but guys, reading is extremely important. Uh, I'm not going to say what neighbor, but one of my neighbors during, during my younger years, uh, I went and I, he invited me for coffee, and I, I asked him a basic question. I said, why don't you go to church? Why don't you go to church? Hey? And he, he said to me, no, because I want the meat. What the pastor is giving me is milk. I don't want milk, I want meat. So I, I sat there, my, the, the gears in my mind couldn't make sense. Because the thing is, milk is something that's given. Meat, you have to go f- fetch yourself. You have to go finish it. If I give you one of our kids' own teachings, and you cannot take it and dissect it and actually get the meat from there, then there's actually something wrong with you. It's, it's because you don't spend time with God to get the meat out of the Word of God. That is why, we, that is why we, when we stand here, we, you can say we can give milk. For some, it is meat. It is amazing stuff. On prayer, uh, three very important things, quickly. Firstly, if you pray... It means that you believe that God exists. Hebrews 11, 6 talks about uh, that it is impossible to please God without faith. That if you, if you draw near to Him, you must believe that He exists and that He is a reward of those who seek Him. So you need, when you pray, you need to believe that He hears you. You need to believe that He hears you. Secondly, prayer is a two-way communication. You don't just talk to God. He listens, but He would like to talk to you as well. Okay, uh, John 10 verse 27 says, my sheep hear, my sheep hear me and they obey me. So what it actually says is that each and every person, if you call yourself a Christian, you have a built-in ability to hear the voice of God. You have a built-in ability to hear the voice of God. And just, just very quickly, I know some people struggle with this. I know that is, why, that is why I'm mentioning it, is if you feel you're not hearing the voice of God, do this. Not drinking water. Excuse me, but do this. Every morning when you spend time with God, take the scripture, ask the Lord, what are you saying to me? Write it down. Go in prayer, keep quiet, listen. Write down what you feel the Lord is saying to you. Do that for 30 days. When you're done, go back to the first day and go and see what God has said to you. You will be astonished. Apply that to your life and you will see God is speaking to you. This takes me to the next point. So that if you, if you read the word and you pray and the Lord speaks to you, the next obvious thing is to obviously obey the word of God. James 1 verse 22, 21 to 22 says, Therefore put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word. That implanted word is the logos. The logos is the physical word of God, uh, which, are, which is able to save your souls. But, and this is the main thing, but be doers of the word and not just hearers, deceiving yourself. Verse 23 and 25 talks about uh, how a man looks in the mirror, sees that he is finished, and he still goes out and he thinks he's okay. You are completely deceived when you think that you are reading the word and not applying it. It makes you a better Christian. It, that's not how it works. It does, that's not how it works. And the biggest challenge with that is that when you go out and you have this mindset, that it is actually better, you're actually deceiving others as well. And they are, especially the people that you are leading. We, we, cannot, we cannot have that. Uh, John Bevere, uh, in his one teaching, The Bait of Satan, said something very interesting. He said, the problem with deception is that it, it is deceiving. The problem with deception is that it is deceiving. If you, if you battle with uh, actually obeying the word of God and... Um, listening to the word, there, there's one motivator that I want to give to you that, that actually stuck with me, and it's this in John 14, verse 15. It says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. This is Jesus' word. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. 
in, the, in Revelation 2, if I'm not mistaken, God tells the church of Ephesus, you have lost your first love. The biggest question that comes back to me is like, Philip, how do I, how do I get this first love back? How do I, how do I get this first love back to, to, to engage with God again? Simple. Spend time with Him. Spend time with Him. I don't, I don't go out and do things that hurt, that hurt my wife because I love her. Because we spend time together. For the sake of our relationship, I'm prepared to change. And so it must be the same with us, with God as well. For the sake of your relationship with God, change. It is something that He is desiring for you because there is so much more. There is so much more. And I want to add that then with this, with this great love that you have for Him, this compassion that you have for Him, you cannot help but shut up. You keep on talking about Him. I think, I think the staff is tired of hearing me talking about my wife and how clever she is. How awesome she is. Hey? I mean, I cannot carry four kids. I can't. She has given us, she, what she has gone through just for the kids is amazing. And how she's handling things at work, it is phenomenal. I brag about it because, uh, because of the love that's in me. I want to say this. Witnessing to people about Jesus is probably one of the ways that you, uh, that you grow the fastest. Because, man, you kick yourself out of your comfort zone. Hey? You become extremely bold to tell people, listen here, I want to tell you something about, about God and what He has done for, for me. And you get to learn a lot of things. Like in sometimes, and, and, and I want to say this also, if you, if you ever have become negative of witnessing because people keep on asking you questions you can't answer, don't see it as a negative thing. Rather use it and find out how to actually counter-argument the, the thing. It's called apologetics. I had, uh, for, for my one university um, assignment, I had to ask people, what, um, what, is your, what is your offense towards Christianity? I bumped into a lot of Muslims, by the way. And the one thing all of them said, in, it was like in one voice, they said, show me in your Bible where Jesus says, I'm God. Because we believe that. We believe that Jesus is God. Show me in your Bible where Jesus is God. Obviously, I went through and I said, here are the, the different I am's that, that God has said, I am. And that actually shows that he is God. So it wasn't a direct, yes, I am God, that specific words. But there was indirect references in the Bible that shows that he is, that he is God. And they were quiet. They were quiet. So I want, to, I want to encourage you that. And it also, when you witness to people, you're fulfilling the mandate. Uh, Matthew 28 verse 19 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's part of our obedience to tell people about Jesus because we are living in a lost world. We're living in a lost world. I want to challenge you guys for this week. Just for this week. If you go out and you speak to someone, whether at work or wherever the case might be, go and speak to them. Tell them one thing that what God has done for you. One thing that you, are, that you are thankful for, you must say it is because of Jesus, not because of God. And I'll tell you why. Because Allah for many people is also God. Okay? And I'm not going to stand here Allah. Allah. Yeah. <laughs> the cape nearly climbed out of me, sorry. You, you cannot allow Allah to have the glory that God, has, that God has given. Our God, Yahweh, Jesus has given to you. So his name is Jesus. And you say to him, it is Jesus actually gave me this breakthrough or why I'm thankful for. Which takes me to our next point. I was, uh, when I was at university, man, I'm broke like most students. Hey? I was broke. But one thing I could remember in, my, in my, my, my second, third year, I was one of those clever guys. I, I did a three-year course in four years. And in my, in my second, third year, I could remember I, I joined, uh, we were in a church uh, called Patria, they were part of Every Nation, and they had the Every Nation Leadership Institute. It was a two-year course, but I did their first year. Man, I was broke. But I know that whatever they are uh, present, I'm going to learn, and I know if I go there, I'm going to grow. And there was a guy that went, Ben, sure. Man, the stuff that I learned from that guy and how he taught, they also used people in their church who had the gifting of, of teaching to teach to the people the notes. And I'm going to say, I was absolutely blessed. And I want to tell you guys the same is here. Let's quickly look at the scripture. Ephesians 4 verse 11 to 12. It says, 
And he gave apostles and prophets and evangelists, the shepherds and the teachers, for this reason, to equip the saints for the work of the ministries, for building up the body of Christ. He had Lighthouse Church. We give you that opportunity. That is why you can serve in the coffee shop. We've got the visit the center. We've got the visit the center. If you need to serve, you need to rub a little bit of shoulders with people, come and join us. Come and join us in it. Um, another area that, we, that, uh, that you can actually learn or actually have breakthrough in your life is through our life support system. We, we make it available for you guys. We have the marriage course. We have the, uh, we have the divorce care. We have grief share if you are battling. We have that. And then lastly, very importantly, we have what we call the Lighthouse School of Ministry. It is Bible school. And guys, please, we are not trying to make you theologians. That's, that's not the aim of it. We are not trying to make you theologians. What we're trying to do is to help you grow more in Christ. We are running three courses, basic biblical foundations, just what is what and who is who, you know? What is grace? What is faith? What do you do with spiritual warfare? We all, everyone does that the first time. If you come to, to, to Lighthouse Church, that's the first course you do to lay a good foundation. Then we've got what we have, basic ministry training. Derek is going to do that in the month of Feb. There, we teach you how to pray for people that are sick. Hey? Because I've seen people lose completely their old sense of manners when they start praying for people if they are healed. Because you don't just touch someone when you pray. You don't just touch someone. And we teach you what to do. We teach you in basic ministry training. If you sit in life group and someone manifests a demon, what do you do? How do you approach it? How do you deal with it? And then lastly, we have a, a lifestyle to pray. If you battle with prayer, especially in public areas, come. We, we, we are giving you these tools to help you grow into Christ. So if you are new to Lighthouse Church, see you tomorrow morning, or tomorrow evening, sorry. Please sign up. Sign up for Bible school. We're starting tomorrow morning. Uh, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. It's morning now. And then the last point, which is probably the most, most important by far, and it is the Holy Spirit. John 14, 16 to 17 says, And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells in you. Many translations will translate it as the helper. He's the advocate. He's the comforter. He's the counselor. Guys, I can guarantee you now he's all of that and more. The, the Greek word that they use for it is parakletos. It, it literally means uh, one summoned beside you. It literally means one summit beside you. So whether you are in a bad situation, if you're going through a, a challenge, he's beside you. If you, are, if you are facing absolute turmoil in your life, I want to say he is beside you. When you are having victory in your life, he is beside you and he's celebrating with you. I said that specifically because I know there are many of you here this morning that you, you, had, you have a lot of victories in your life, big victories that other people do not notice. But I can tell you now, God notices it, and he celebrates with you. I want, to, I want to encourage you guys. Ask the Lord to show you where he is in those times of victories. Because I myself experienced a huge victory when I was a young boy. And for the sake of time, I won't share too much. As a young boy, and uh, the counselor that I saw when I was in George told me, ask the Lord to show you where he was. And one morning when I spent time with the Lord, it was in an instant the Lord took me there. And I could see how ecstatic God was for me in that moment. And I thought I was so, so lonely. So God celebrates with you. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or dread for them. This was, by the way, when Joshua just took over from Moses. Uh, for it is the, the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He's always by your side. How, you, how to, to help you to remind yourself that He is beside you is you worship Him. Is you worship Him. It is through worship that you become sensitive to the Holy Spirit in knowing that He is there. Uh, in, when I studied forestry um, and when I was extremely alone at the beginning in Carolina, I would pick up my guitar and I would just start singing. I would just start giving God the praise and the honor. And through that, it actually carried me through. It is an amazing spiritual warfare thing that you do as well because you shut the enemy up. All the lies and everything that he tells you falls away and your focus is redirected to him. 
So this brings me to a, a quite an interesting conclusion. First of all, I told you guys that you need to go to church, right? Not to neglect what uh, the, the, the fellowship of the saints. Then I also said you need to read your Bible and pray. Make it spending time with God a priority. Obey the word of God because your obedience will show the level of your maturity. Your obedience will show the level of your maturity. Then you have to witness, obviously, because it fulfills the mandate. Use the tools that the church is giving to you. Apply for Bible school at LSM. Please, if you haven't applied for LSM, please do. We've got a couple of spaces still left. We are expecting a great amount of people to come, and you will be blessed. And then, lastly, the Holy Spirit. Know that He's always beside you. And then, it's quite interesting what happens. But God's will is for you. It's growth. He wants to see you grow. He wants to see you grow. You see, to grow, you, you need to get your hands dirty. You need to get your hands dirty. It's not just a matter of sitting back and doing nothing. We didn't, when, when the boys were there, we didn't give them the bike with a manual and said, listen, here's the bicycle, this is how you ride the bike. No, they had to get on. They had to ride. Um, you need practice. The more you practice, the better you'll get. And just as soon as you think, yes, I'm getting this right, then another thing changes because the Lord takes you into the next level. It's kind of like taking away the spare wheel, the, the side wheels, the training wheels of the bike. But it still remains an adventure. God still keeps it and he wants you to enjoy this, this ride with him. Because you can go places. You can go places. Uh, your adventure increases. It's, God doesn't want you to be the same guy this, now, this time, this time, this year, to be the same guy this time next year. There has to be a change. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to climb on a bicycle and ride around the house the whole time. I don't want to be on a bicycle and just go to the park and back. I want to ride out into mountains. I want to go and see people, experience so many new things. And that is what God has for us. That is, that is what He wants for each and every one of you. I don't know about you, but I really want everything that Jesus has for me. Everything that Jesus has for me. And, and I can stand you with absolute confidence and say this, that for every deacon in this church and every elder in this church, they have the same heart for each and every person sitting here in the chairs, that you grow into maturity of God. We don't want people warming seats. This building is not enough. We want to see each and every person growing. And that is why, guys, I want you all to make growing as part of your priority. Make growing in the Spirit. Allow God to sanctify you. Allow Him to sanctify you so that you can change. Let's pray. Just quickly with all, all heads bowed, all eyes closed, I just want to ask, and I'm going, to ask you to be, I'm going to ask you to be bold with this. If you, if you want to grow, if you want to grow in God and it is a desire that is burning within you, can I ask you to stand? I would like to pray for you. Growth never stop. Heavenly Father, I just pray a blessing of each and every person standing this morning. I pray, Lord, for, for technique. I pray, Lord, for strategy. I pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you will bring conviction where conviction is needed. I pray, Lord, you will bring correction where correction is needed in each and every person's life. Father, so that they can grow more in the likeness of God. But, Father, I pray more that they will enjoy this journey that you have for them. That they will enjoy this journey. So I pray blessing over you. I pray for a hunger over you. I pray that there will be a new fire kindled within you to get to know who God is. I speak to it over you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks. You may be seated.
a second group of people I, I, want, to, I want to quickly speak to. If you, if you experience pushback, because it happens, the enemy is out to get us, his plans are out are to, to, to kill us and destroy us and steal from us. If you experience kickback, when you try and spend time with God, or when you are trying to grow more into Christ, can I ask you to stand? Do you experience any form of kickback? Can I ask you to stand? Because I, because I, I know. I've experienced it myself. The picture I had this morning was strongholds being broken. And I prayed it over each and every one of you. Every stronghold... That, is, that, is, that has gripped you. I pray for breakthrough now in Jesus' name. Breakthrough in Jesus' name. Satan, you take your hands off of the children of God. I pray, Father, that the fire that I prayed for earlier, that will, it will be kindled, Father, it will actually burn off those chains, that nothing can hold them back. Father, I pray for whatever lies has been told, that they are not good enough, whatever idea or, or understanding they might have from the past, Lord, I break that now in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, for a new excitement to start firing up within them to learn and grow more into who you are, Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord. Freedom, I pray. Freedom, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. You can be seated. Lastly, and we do this every Sunday. We are talking about growth. We are talking about Jesus. We are talking about sanctification. We are talking about this one that is next to you the whole time. But you have no idea or you have, you have no physical or personal relationship with Jesus. None, none whatsoever. It's kind of like foreign, the things that I'm talking to you this morning. And there's a, there's a burning within you to say, man, I need this change. I need to grow. I need to change. It might be because there's many difficulties that you are facing, maybe in your marriage or in your, in your work situation or whatever the case might be. But if that is you and you have never given your heart to the Lord, can I ask you to be so bold to stand? If that's anyone here this morning, can I please ask you to be so bold to please stand? Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm going to ask you guys to do something extremely, extremely bold. But can you please come to the front? And this is where we make a big rah rah about this. It's an altar call. I'm going to ask you guys just to pray with me. Can you, will you guys join me as we pray with him? Just in faith. Just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I repent. Lord, I bring to you my life. Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. That he has risen on the third day. And that he now is my King. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will give me your Holy Spirit to lead me, to guide me, from this day forth. I thank you, Lord, for a new life in you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Come on, guys. Hey, well done, guys. Well done. Heaven is absolutely celebrating here this morning. I would like to conclude. Please, sign up for Sign up for, light, for the Lighter School of Ministry. It will challenge you, and you will have so much fun. You get to meet a lot of awesome people. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this wonderful morning. Thank you, Lord, for the word that has been shared. Father, I pray that whatever has been shared, Father, it will not fall on deaf ears, but it will be written on each and every person's heart. Father, not only just as something to use as a tool to teach others, but, Father, for the application to their lives as well, so that they can take it, apply it, and live it, Father, because we are not hypocrites. If we say we are Christians, we are Christians, and we will live this life. We must live this life to your glory. We thank you, Father, for this morning, and I pray, Lord, that you will bless the rest of our week. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.